Hi guys. All right. I wanted to go over this dream that I had last night. The dream that I had, when I physically woke up after that dream, I had a pounding headache. Never had that before. All right. So I, I definitely know that this dream was triggered from a video that I posted yesterday or the day prior because I posted a video about explaining that my videos are not for people who don't accept truth, biblical truth, but my videos are for God's sheep and Christ said to feed his sheep. All right, and do right after I was done with that video, that same night I fell asleep, I had a dream. Okay. And how this dream was, this dream I was visiting a church. All right. And for some reason in this dream, I kept walking in and out of this church. All right. The first time I walked in, I sat down and was listening to this preacher. And that preacher was speaking a bit of truth. But at the same time, it seems as if he was like a comedian. And his words and what he was uh, preaching was dabbling back into the simple things of the world. To where people began to laugh. And in my dream, literally in my dream, as I was listening to him. It was so, what he was speaking was so luring that I sat there and I began to laugh with the crowd. Mind you, like I said, he was speaking worldly. This was, he was like a pastor slash comedian somewhat in my dream. It's like he was flattering these people, okay? And in my video that I made yesterday, I was speaking about flattery. So this pastor was like flattering people with uh, comic jokes. But it was worldly comments, jokes, and I found myself laughing. And then when I caught myself, I was like, what am I doing here? And I got up and I walked out, okay? I got up and I walked out. And then when I thought about it, I walked back in because I wanted to say something to the church. It was going to be like an outburst. Not an outburst, but like the spirit overcoming me. Seeing that this is a false teacher, a false preacher, and to tell the congregation to repent. That's the first thing that came to my mind when I walked out. I was like, I don't I don't need to walk out like that. I need to come back and tell these people that they're being deceived by this preacher who's luring them with worldly comics. I mean, like I said, he was he was preaching half truth, but then he'll dabble back into the world. Of foolishness, start speaking foolishness, causing people to laugh. Basically, he was like kissing up to them to keep to keep them. All right, and then I went back again, and when I went back, it's like the church was finishing up, and then I was trying to get the pe preacher's attention or the pastor's attention, whoever he was, so that I, so that I could speak with him. But other people were coming up to him, talking to him. And, it was just a long line, and I was like, forget it. So I left that church. I left again. And then something urged me, something was like, go back and tell that preacher truth. So I went back again, and I waited for him. All right? And as I was waiting for, when I went back into the church, all right, it seemed like, the thing is, when I went back the third time, the scenery changed as if I was in like a, a, a little store, but the people, the, the uh, people were still there. The preacher was still there. It's as, it's as if the preacher had a church, and then attached to his church, he had a store where he was selling CDs. This is what I seen. He was selling CDs, and he was selling books, but these books weren't Bibles. They weren't. They were not godly books. These were worldly books, and I promise you. On one of the books I've seen, it said something, something, and then in bold, it said sex. Something, something, and then in bold, it says, in bold, capital, it said S-E-X. And I looked at it, and I, like, shook my head, and I kept walking. 
And these people, his congregation, were buying these books, buying these CDs. And in this little store this is, that's attached to the church, while he was buying CDs, there was music playing in the background. Music playing in the background. And that music was worldly music. It wasn't Christian music. It wasn't praise music. It wasn't worship music. Nor was it any type of gospel. It was like if someone turned on R&B. And they played that music. This was supposed to be a pastor selling CDs. He was selling these CDs to his congregation. He was selling these books to his congregation. Because he was there at the register. People were coming up to him, talking to him about the service, and laughing and joking. And I, that's this is this is that third time that I came back in to wait for him to talk to him, okay? To wait for him to talk to him. And then I finally got to talk to him, and he was sitting down. That's what I remember. Yes, he was sitting down on like a stage, and I came up. No, okay. So he was talking to people, and the people were dying down as far as talking to him. And I came to him with a stern look and said, may I speak with you, sir? And he said, okay. And so he walked away from the crowd and he went to go sit on like a stage. And I went in front of him and I was saying, you are a false teacher. And I could see through you. You are a false teacher and I could see through you. And when I, when I said that, he just looked at me as, he just stared at me and he paused. And when he stared at me and he paused, he knew it was real because he got up and he walked out, he walked out of his store, okay? He looked at me, he paused, he got up, he walked out of his store. And with him walking out of his store, I followed him outside. I followed him outside. It's like he was trying to run away. It was, he was trying to run away from what I was telling him. And then when he was running, I, I followed him. And while he was outside, his, some of his congregation was outside. Okay? And I grabbed this guy, this false teacher, false preacher, whatever you want to call it. I grabbed him from behind. And I, it, it was like a hug. It was like a beer hug. Not in embracing him. No. This was trying to stop him from running because I had something to tell him. And when I hugged him and I embraced him and I had my lips to his ears, I was hugging him from the behind, like a bear hug, embracing him. I had my lips to his ears and I shouted with a loud, forceful voice. And this was nothing but the spirit. This was nothing but the spirit while his congregation was l looking around, but I wasn't paying attention to him. It was a message that I needed to give to him. And the words that I came out of my mouth, I said, the wrath of God is upon your head. That's what I remember in my dream. That's what I remember saying in my dream loudly and forcefully. This is a message from God. The wrath of God is upon your head. And I let him go, and he ran. I let him go, and this man left his church this man left the store, he left his congregation, and he ran, okay? And then as I was about to leave, his congregation looked like, they looked like teenagers, younger than me, like about in their early 20s, late teens. And I remember about four or five, they looked like students. And I was walking by them to leave, and they grabbed me. They was like, yeah, we know he's a false teacher. But these are the ones that was buying his CDs. These are the ones that was buying the books. These are the ones that was in church laughing. I remember the girl saying, yeah, we know. We've been trying to tell him that some of the stuff that he say is not in Scripture. But he would only look at us and then nod his head and say, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Like, he would say that not not being serious. But it's as if he knew he wasn't speaking truth, but attempting to deceive his congregation and use the word of God for his gain to sell these books, to sell these CDs. But it's like these girls 
or the, these students, they knew. They said, we know that he, he doesn't speak the full truth. But I said, why do you keep coming here then? But they wouldn't, re they wouldn't reply. They wouldn't respond to me saying that. But that's, that's the dream that I had. And then I woke up. It felt so real because I woke up with such a headache. I had a headache because when I was, basically, when I was saying that to him, with all my strength, all my power, all my might, I held on to this guy. And I remember being in his ear, and I kept saying over and over, the Lord's wrath is upon your head. God's wrath is upon your head in front of everybody. And in real life, this is not something that I would do. But it overcame me in that dream. And when that happened, the guy realized he knew what he was doing. He knew he was leading God's sheep astray. But he used the words of God and things of God to lure people, to deceive people for his gain. But he made money off of these CDs that he was buying, or that they were buying. He made money off of the books that they were buying. These books, like I said, these books were not not Bibles. These books were not luring people back to God and repentance. These books were talking about sex. The music in that store, which is attached to that church, was worldly music. This is music as if you can turn on the radio and listen to R&B and hip-hop. That's the music he was playing. And not that race matters, but this preacher was not of African-American descent. This was a Caucasian-American preacher. And his congregation, the people that I spoke to, was African-American descent. African-American descent. He was luring them to these books. He was luring them to this music. He had music playing in the background in his little store attached to his church. He was speaking half-truth. Have truth of scripture. This is to get these Christians, lure these Christians to his church. And then he would mix the preaching instead of giving them full truth, not flattering them. He would put a lick of, com uh, like, a, like he was a comedian almost, making them laugh. And it was very luring because the first time I came in there, I sat down, seeing that this man would speak truth. And he spoke, a, he spoke a bit of truth. That's why I stayed in there. And then he began to dabble false things in there, speaking worldly things, causing the congregation to laugh. And I also laughed, too. And then while in the midst of me laughing, something overcame me, like, what am I doing here? This guy, is a, he's not a real preacher. He's not a real teacher. Okay, and that's the dream that I had. That very same night that I post my video saying that all my videos are not for people who, I mean, my videos are for people who want to accept truth. And they're not for people who have itchy ears or want to be lied to or want to be flattered because this, this, I'm not that person. I'm not that person to flatter you, like I said in my video. But I'm that person to speak truth. For I myself will be judged before God. And as I said in my video, he will say, did you preach the truth? Did you tell them? Did you warn them of my wrath to come if they do not obey me? Did you? This will be put on me. This will be put on me. What would I say to God when I stand before God? What would I say to Christ who died for sin? What would I say? Yes, Father, I did preach the truth. I told him, I warned him, just like you, just as he said. But in that dream, I had a message, and this is for me, this is a message for all false prophets, false teachers, false preachers. This is a message for God, from God for you. The wrath of God is upon your head. You won't keep you won't keep deceiving the congregation. But these people, they want their ears ears tickled because, as the girl said in my dream, who is of who is uh, in his who is in his church? 
She said, we know that he don't speak all truth. But I'm like, why do you keep going? But they never gave me an answer. So I walked away. And when I walked away, I, left, I, walk, I woke up. I woke up. It's like they, they were okay with this preacher flattering them, making them laugh, selling them CDs, selling them books. They were okay with it. For this you will also be judged, congregation. You refuse truth. You know, but you refuse it because you want your ears tickled. This is something that you're comfortable with, and you accept. This reminds me of in the book of Revelation. Kid you not. Now that we speak about it, thank you, Father. Now that we speak about it, it reminds me of one of the church God spoke about. When he said that, um, you tolerate this woman Jezebel. And my Jezebel is uh is also known as or AKA known as false teaching. Let me find that so I can go over that with you before I end this video. That makes a that brings a good point. Hmm. There's one where it says, well, this isn't the Jezebel one, but this one makes sense too as well. Christ says, this is the church to Pergamos. Christ said, you tolerate some among you who do as Balaam did when he taught Balak how to ruin the people of Israel by involving them in sexual sin and encouraging to go to idol feasts. Yes. You have some of these very same followers of Balaam within you, within among you. You hear that? Balaam. You tolerate. So you allow. These people allow this guy to preach falsehood. These people allow this guy to sell these CDs and these books. Worldly things. Involving them in sexual sin. These books, like I said, it says it has said something something X S E X. That's what I remember seeing. And then it says and encouraging them to go to idol feasts. Do you know what today idol feast is? It's not the idol back like back in the day where they made statues. Idols are anything that you put before God. Idols are anything that you worship or you desire. And you put before God. Music. That's an idol. Clothing. That's an idol. The lust for money. The lust for gain. That's an idol. He said, and encourage them to go to idol feasts. Music. Idol feasts. Parties and music. Encouraging them to buy these CDs. These books. This is what God speaks about. These are things that happen to this day. When he speaks to his church, he's speaking to people to this day. So the congregation, you still have to stand before God. Though you know some people around you who are preaching false, yet you accept it. Christ calls his church out, this particular individual. He said, you tolerate some among you who do as Balaam did when he taught Balak how to ruin the people of Israel. By involving them in sexual sin, encouraging them to go to idol feasts. Yes, you have some of these very same followers of Balaam among you. You tolerate it. You accept it. This is that what the girl was telling me. You accept the fact that this preacher, this teacher, this pastor, whoever he is, you accept it that he was preaching falsehood. Hmm. It's crazy. And here's another one that he spoke to the churches. This is the church of Thyatira. This is all in Revelation if you want to look at it. All right. This is one where he's this is one where he speaks about Jezebel. Like I said, Jezebel is a false a false uh false religion. Jezebel could be a false religion that speaks a bitter truth, yet speaks lies, just like that pastor. 
It says it right here. This is him saying to his church, and that church is individuals. For the for the, for the body of Christ makes up uh, is built up of, of individuals. Okay, he said you are permitting that woman Jezebel. Okay, basically let's go back. It says you are permitting that false teacher who calls herself a prophetess. Just like in my dream, that man called himself a pastor, a teacher. You are permitting that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach my servants. Okay, you hear that? To teach my servants that sex sin is not a serious matter. In my dream, what was he selling? Books of sex, CDs, worldly music. She urges them to practice immortality and to eat meat that has been sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to change her mind and attitude, but she refused. Pay attention now to what I'm saying. I will lay her upon a sick bed of in intense infliction, along with all her immoral followers, unless they turn again to me, repenting of their sin with her, and I will strike her dead. I'm sorry, it says, I will strike her children dead, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches deep within men's hearts and minds. I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. Let me break that down. Like I said, Jezebel, when he speaks of her, he's speaking of this false teaching. And when he speaks of the children, he's speaking of other false teachings. And he said, I gave her time to repent. This is me when I was in that guy's ear. And I said, the wrath of God is upon your head. For me to say that and for him to run off, God is still giving him time to repent from teaching these followers false. And to be serious with God. And to feed his sheep according to what he says. According to his will. According to scripture. According to the Holy Spirit. Let me read it again. Like I said, if you you can study this if you want. This is to the church of Thyatira. Christ said, yet I have this against you. This is people. You are permitting, you are allowing that Jezebel, you are allowing this false teaching who calls herself a prophetess to teach my servants that sex, sin is not a serious matter. She urges them to practice immortality and to eat meat that has been sacrificed to idols. This is basically indulging into sin. Indulging into the lust for money, the lust for gain, worldliness. This is to eat meat that has been sacrificed to idols. That's what that is, indulging into worldliness. Verse 21. Christ said, I gave her time to change her mind and attitude, but she refused. You see that? These people know what they're, what they're doing. These people know that they're not teaching God the truth. They're not teaching God's people the truth. But Christ said, I gave them, I gave them time to change their minds and attitude, but they refused to. They want to continue to teach falsehood. To the children of God. And the children of God, knowing truth, they accept it. Christ continues, pay attention now to what I am saying. All right? This is because this woman, I mean, this is because of this false teaching, this false preacher with his falsehood and those who do such things. They don't want to speak truth. Christ said, because of this, pay attention to what I'm saying. He said, I will lay her upon a sick bed of Intense affliction. This is her punishment. This is when I told this guy, God's wrath is upon your head. This is a warning from God. I'm telling you this. I will lay, I will lay her upon a sick bed of intense affliction, along with all her immoral followers. You know what he said? This is this God is basically saying, I'm going to do this to this preacher who's preaching this falsehood, and I will do this to this group of people who you were speaking to in your dream who knew that this person was speaking falsehood, yet they continue to follow him. They continue to buy his CDs. They continue to buy his books. They continue to indulge in sin, yet they know right from wrong. This is what God is saying. This is what Christ is saying. He said, I will lay her upon a sick bed of intense affliction. This is your punishment. And he said, along with all her immoral followers, these are people following this false teaching. 
But he says, unless they turn again to me, repenting of their sins with her, and I will strike her children dead. Her children is these other false teachings. And then Christ continues, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches deep within men's hearts. You hear that? Deep within men's hearts, he said, though you teach them, I know your real motive. What your real motive and that real, that, that, that preachers, that teacher's real motive when I rebuked him was the lust for gain, was the lust for money, selling these CDs and these books, deceiving the congregation of God because he wanted to gain. And, that, and for him to do that, he, he had a desire for money. Christ said, I am he who searches deep within men's hearts and minds. I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. And he continues, As for the rest of you in Thyatira, who have not followed this false teaching. You see, now he called it out. Now he basically defined this Jezebel. He says, As for the rest of you in Thyatira, who has not followed this false teaching, I will ask nothing further of you. Only hold tightly to what you have until I come. Boss. This is the dream that I had last night. This is the dream that I had last night, and I woke up with a headache. It, the headache went away, but I woke up with a headache. It felt like I was involved in this dream for real, for real. But I just wanted to put that dream out there. Don't accept any false teaching. Don't accept sin among you. So you think that you can accept it and God will be okay with you. He's going to judge you too. For the Lord in Scripture says, Rebuke your brothers and sisters. Well, rebuke your brother. This means brother in Christ. If he sins. But forgive him if he says sorry. This is, not, this is basically saying, Don't accept his sin. Don't accept his sin. Don't look at it and keep going. Tell him about himself. He said, rebuke him. And if he turns from this sin and he apologizes and when he repents, forgive him. But those are the ones who won't, they won't flattery. They don't want you to rebuke them. They want you to flatter them. Okay? But I thought I'd put out this video. If you have any questions or comments, take care.